Southern Nevada has never seen anything like it. Three armed men holding police at bay for two days using jail guards as hostages. Patrick McKenna was the brains of the outfit. Clearly defined by psychologists as a sociopath. He took no culpability responsibility or accountability for himself. McKenna already had a long rap sheet, starting with kidnap, rape, and assault in 1964 at age 17, followed by his first prison escape two years later. Recaptured, he served time and was released, only to be jailed again for a different set of crimes, and then he murdered his cellmate. In August of 79, he and two other inmates made their move. Had gained access to the gun locker and had each had obtained a weapon and had taken uh, three inmates or three uh, corrections officers hostage. Former Sheriff Jerry Keller was a member of the hostage negotiation team gathered downtown. The location might come as a bit of a surprise. It hasn't been that long since this was City Hall. But four decades ago, the north side of the complex was also the county jail. News Director Bob Stoldall was enlisted as the go-between, delivering messages and food to the captors with stern advice from the officer in charge. He put his hands on me and said, listen, you're not John Wayne. These are bad guys. And I was thinking to myself, well, if I don't think I'm John Wayne, I'm not going back up there again. 44 hours into the standoff, tensions were running high among the captors. Stoldall was on the phone with McKenna. That's when the one, two, three, four, five, six shots, we could all hear and we looked at each other. Keller thinks the shooting started when a water cooler compressor in the next room turned on. We started rattling against the wall and they thought we were trying to burrow through. And as a result, the conflict between Lorenzo and Shaw boiled over and they got involved in a gunfight. Felix Lorenzo and Eugene Shaw were dead. One of the guards had taken a gunshot to the hand. Another spoke to News 3 about the ordeal. There was no doubt in our minds that they were going to kill us. They made that very clear that we weren't leaving there alive. McKenna was convicted of the earlier jailhouse murder in 1980 and sentenced to death, then again on appeal in 1982. In 1996, the Supreme Court ordered a retrial of the penalty phase and he was brought back to Clark County. And I've seen video that shows him wearing wrap mitts around his hands? A hood? Yeah, absolutely. He is a threat for escape at all times. The result was the same. Set the penalty and sentence to be imposed upon the defendant, Patrick Charles McKenna, at death. The only reason I have the death penalty is because I am who I am and it was Las Vegas and I was just involved in that jailhouse thing. While the siege gripped our city, Stoldall doesn't think the man behind it is important to local history. Covering Spilatro and all of those things, those are the moments, the MGM tragedy, the, the Hill tragedy, those are the things, but, but, but Bozo McKenna, no, I don't, I don't put him in, in, in that category. At 72 years old, Patrick McKenna is the second longest serving person in Nevada under sentence of death. There have been no executions in the state since 2006. The area that used to serve as the jail is now part of the Zappos campus at Las Vegas Boulevard in Stewart.